Coach, did you bring the boss in with you today? So I'm Patagonia. Yes, sir. <laughs> Questions? Let's talk about first day in pads. Uh, it was good. You know, we, we, the last two days were uppers. Mm -hmm. Today was uh, acclimatization day number five. The first day we were allowed to be in full pads. So uh, we, um, you know, cut down a little bit of the individual stuff today. You know, focused on some of some, some uh, you know, team stuff. You know, no live tackling. But, uh, you know, I thought the kids had an hour and a half of really, really good work out there. And, uh, took another positive step forward. It's just true, but does tempo change whenever he puts on the full or you know, equipment and gets going? You know, conventional wisdom would dictate that it does, but you know, one of the many things I've learned uh, in my brief time here is, and I'm sure you saw in Hard Knocks last night, uh, the, the tempo doesn't change at Mississippi State. And so whether we're in helmets, whether we're in uppers, whether we're in full pads, uh, they go. So. Uh, I'm not sure I would say well and sick him. So, uh, no, it, do, it doesn't change because these kids go hard 100% of the time. We've seen Willie out the last couple of days. Sir? We've seen Willie out the yeah, last couple of days. Yeah, a little body day to day. Nothing big. It, there'll be nothing extended. How is uh, Zuber kind of picking up the offense so far? Uh, really well. I think when you go back and look at his stuff at uh, Kansas State, uh, you know, he played a variety of positions, played the slot, played both outside positions. Uh, so, um, you know, more than anything, it's, it's, it's formations, it's language. You know, some of the things that we do in the, in the past game that are, you know, route adjustment oriented. Uh, um, so, I, Coach Johnson's doing a real, real good job with those guys, and Isaiah's picking up quickly. Because of that versatility, do you anticipate being able to kind of move them around for anything? Yeah, we, we want to cross train our, our receivers like we do our offensive line. We necessarily don't want to get one guy locked into a position. Uh, you know, with our pass game, it's, it's taught conceptually rather than by position, so it's not about. You know, what is the X to Z or the H have on this route? It's in my, in my field number one, field number two, or field number three, boundary number one, or boundary number two. So, you know, based on what the formation is, you kind of plug them into those spots. So, uh, I think, you know, that uh, you know, that flexibility will allow us to put people where they need to be. Some of the stuff we've got to see, Javante Payton's look, look yeah. good out there. Does, does he continue to look good when we leave the practice field? Yeah. Has he been impressing you guys? Yeah, they've, uh, you know, we, uh, you know, I, I think last year, I haven't been able to pass the ball very successfully, essentially everywhere I've been. Um, I was uh, pretty optimistic of, of the strides we were going to take in year one in the transition of offenses. And you know, like I said it before, and it probably bears repeating. I thought we could go from A to Z, and we went from A to M. Went from a season where we had a 250-yard receiver as a leader to two guys having 400. And uh, you know, I think with the, with the skill that we have returning, those guys having another year and understanding the system, in addition to the guys we brought in. Uh, you know, that was one of our goals offensively in, in the fall camp is improving the efficiency, the explosiveness uh, of, the, of the pass game. And I think the guys will allow us to do that. Do you know where Peyton could end up positional-wise? He's, he's working Z right now primarily, but uh, he's a guy that can also play the slot. But, you know, some of the things, like I said, formationally, he can also end up as boundary one, too. So primarily is a Z, but the Z lines up in a couple of different spots based on what the call is. Speaking of last year, Nick Fitzgerald had 211 <laughs> carries last year. <laughs> That's a lot for, for a Joe Moorhead offense. Ideally, how much would you like to run the quarterback? Historically, it has been about 10 to 15 a game, max. Uh, and I think that's ideal. And I think uh, the reason you saw so many carries um, was because of you know, some of our struggles in certain games passing the ball. Uh, and, and when that occurs, uh, teams know that you have to run it. Uh, and then you're going to get a, a, a stack box at the line of scrimmage. And when you have, when you're outnumbered by one or more, then you got to utilize the quarterback as a number in the run game because you can't just continue to hand it off to unblock people at the point of attack. The guy will get tackled at the line of scrimmage. Uh, and the emphasis on taking carries off the running back, I'm sorry, getting carries to the running back and taking them off the quarterback has as much to do with our pass game as it does our run game. Because when we get people out of the, out of the crowded line of scrimmage and playing a little more too high shell, you know, more of those carries can go to the quarterback instead of the running back because of the read element of it. You mentioned cross-training the receivers. Does that apply in, in certain senses all the way to the tight ends and running backs as yeah. well? Uh, more probably to the tight ends than the running backs. Mm -hmm. yeah. we're, we're not a big empty team. We'll do some of it. Mm -hmm. uh, probably I'd say we minor rather than major, but certainly some of the tight ends that we have and their athletic ability and their size are guys that we can move around a little bit. And you look at the quarterbacks, is, is there separation between Thompson and Stevens and then to Maiden and and Schrader, or are they all just sort of equal at this point? I don't know if it's necessary separation is, is focus on guys who, who most realistically have a chance to win the job. Uh, and, and they're, you know, they're, 
their assignment, for lack of a better term, in this quarterback competition and also just throughout fall camp is to improve the efficiency and explosiveness of the pass game while minimizing turnovers. So they're all, all you know, charted and graded daily on, on those aspects of the game. But, you know, I don't want to say it's a two-horse race because, you know, anything could happen. But, you know, KT and Tommy are getting the, the reps with the uh, the ones and twos and, and Garrett and uh, Jalen are getting the you mentioned in media day, you'd probably ideally like to know somebody. I think you said the Wednesday, like 10 days out from the first game, you'll have, to have yeah. a scrimmage or something. Is that yeah. still kind of in your mind, sort of the timeline, even though it's not in stone? I mean, that, that is the, the rough estimate. And I think it's probably, the, I will say the most ideal, but it's kind of a, 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 a time frame where when a, a true competition is occurring that, that we've you know earmarked as a spot. I mean, if it separates earlier, it separates earlier. I mean, the sooner you can name it, the better, because for uh, consistency and uh, you know cohesion. But, but it could go longer. I, I don't know. But uh, I think ideally, as soon as you can, you know, conventionally, it's been that Wednesday. And you know, if it's still tight, it could go longer. How would you kind of assess where your depth is right now at the running back position? Yeah, uh, we um, Collins. The, the, Clear cup one, he's doing a real good job. Nick's played a lot of good football here at Mississippi State. And this kind of guy can do a lot of things, really, really uh, excels in pass protection. And, uh, you know, I think he's a guy that, you know, is going to have to share some of the load. And, uh, you know, right now Lee, Lee is taking the threes. And you can see why he averaged almost 20 yards a touch. I think, you know, the first you know, few days, the uh, speed and, and physicality of SEC football was a bit of a surprise to him. But he, you can see today, he broke off a long one today. And, just picking up pass protection. That, that'll be the biggest thing. I mean, the guy can take a handoff and make a read and run the ball, but you know, be able to, to diagnose blitzes and pressures and protect physically in this league will be his biggest adjustment. After just a couple of practice and then a year being away from him, is Tommy still the same quarterback you remember? Or have you seen any change in him since y'all been a part of year? Uh, well, I mean, I've, it's been almost two, four years. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, what I remember last is, you know, the Maryland game where I think he threw for one. Mm -hmm. Ran for two. I think he had 100, 100, 100 rushing, maybe, and 100 yeah. passing. So that was a good memory. But uh, I think, like anything in any quarterback in any position, you know, another year in a similar type of system, you know, because mm -hmm. Coach Ronnie and Penn State kind of implemented the same deal. You see just a mature guy. And I think, with anything, him being a grad transfer, there's that final year urgency about him. So, so more than anything, I think it, it increased understanding of the system. But I see a real a more mature and more urgent player, is what I'm seeing from Tommy. You yeah. played Tommy at uh, wide receiver song. When he was up there, is there yeah. a plan if if he doesn't win or if KT doesn't win? Whoever is there a plan to maybe find another position for them? We have not discussed that. We're focusing on you know what they're going to do to to win the job, and you know assuming one of the two is going to win it. And then when that happens, you know our job is to identify who our playmakers are and put them in a position to be successful. So if if the guy who doesn't win it is a guy that can you know play a running back position or a like Cordell Stewart. Steal the reference, slash kind of role, and, and uh, you know do some things like we did with Tommy at Penn State, and did a little, a little tiny bit with KT last year. Uh, then we'll do that. You'd have to call a bulldog on the death chart. Of, you'd have to call a bulldog on the death chart. Instead bulldog. Of the you'll think something cooler than that. <laughs> <laughs> Any update on Walker or Waitman? Waitman, no update. Uh, Walker, I thought it was going to be sooner this week. There's still a couple, you know, administrative things on his end that he's working to take care of. So I, I probably. Got out in front of my ski saying early this week, last week. So uh, that that's just a, a, a work in progress. And when it when, <laughs> when uh when it gets finalized, it gets finalized. So you got three really starters back on the offensive line, but they're all three in different spots. Just yep. how is that unit kind of gelling together? Real nice. And I, I think it's anchored by Daryl, you know, who had a real nice season at guard and transitioning into center and you know, that's kind of the linchpin of the of the, of the group. Uh, but I think it all goes back to uh you know, Marcus is um, in our thought process of cross-training guys during the season and getting uh, getting reps in a different position. So maybe when someone goes down, it's not the guy behind him on the depth chart. It's the next best. It's the next best guy to go in. And uh, you know, you know, I think we cleaned up the protection early on last year. You know, after after some of those struggles, I think we did a nice job and we we're second in the SEC in rushing. So our, you know, our. Uh, Kind of goals as an offensive line unit is to, to improve on those things. The great teams I've been on in the, in the four championship teams, mm -hmm. the mentality of those teams have been dictated by the offensive and defensive line, and I think that is something that uh, I know our kids and Marcus take a great amount of pride in. Uh, last week you were talking about weight room and improvements there. Yeah. Obviously, you've broken kind of a new staff in the weight room this year. Just what's your, I guess, what's your judge of how they've done so far, and what have you seen from them? Yeah, I think I think bigger, faster, stronger, more explosive. I think we're seeing that across the board when you look at some of the body weights. 
and then the, the majority of them, when we kind of go over the list, uh, you know, review it every Sunday and then kind of have a quick uh, thumbnail uh, peek at it, you know, every morning after practice. There, there's guys that are on the got to lose list and there's guys that are on the got to gain list and that list isn't, isn't very big. Uh, and the condition level, I think, I think has been good. You know, obviously, you know, it, it, it's challenging because, I mean, this is what it is. I mean, every team in the SEC and every team in the country is practicing these conditions, but I think they've, they've handled it very well. And, and we, we, we've really made a conscious effort to make sure, you know, we take two five-minute water breaks throughout the course of practice. We separate the team periods with installed review periods where there are more walkthroughs to make it as close to a simulation of the game as possible. We get our individual stuff and we do a special teams. Then we water them down. Then we have a, a you know team period of seven on seven, then an install and review, and then another water. So we kind of do make making sure because we want them concentrating on the on their on their their energy, their effort, and their execution. And, and when you're kind of putting that kind of schedule together, I think the kids like it. And I think them allows to not worry about just getting through the rep, but, but maximizing it. Have you always done that? Yep. Well. Uh, well, I've been in charge, yes. Yeah. <laughs> KT made mention that the, the installs go in a lot smoother this year because a lot of it's repetitive. You yeah. know, with you not really having to break in a new quarterback this year, how would you kind of assess where the quarterbacks are install wise? No, well, one's in year two and one's in, I mean, technically going into year four. So that's, that's always a positive. So I think from the quarterback position, and, and, you know, Coach Brown and I were talking about it with the offensive staff a little bit earlier that the two young guys, it's always nice to see them make a jump too. So Garrett and Jalen, you know, and the reps that they're getting, you know, I, th I think they're for guys who've only been in it for one year to see their growth the year two, and then the guys who've been in it kind of two plus, it's, it's been pretty good. Is this the biggest offensive line you've ever coached in terms of size? I'd say more girth than size. I mean, at Penn State, our starting no, I mean, I mean, I mean, just sh sheer, you know, body mass. I mean, our starting right tackle, Penn State for two years was Chaz Wright. You know, he was six five, six six, like three forty. You know, Connor McGovern. I mean, those those guys, they, they were big, but I think, you know, like James, Coach Franklin always said, that the difference between other conferences and the SEC is, is the size, the speed, and the athleticism of the offensive lines. And I think our guys are just, you know, they. I don't know if it's optical illusion. They can look bigger. Maybe I'm wrong. From what we saw when we came, we came and worked with you that day, you know, you like your offensive line to get to that second level. And yeah. get this, is, is that a problem with the size they carry? No, I, I think they've got good feet too. You don't, you don't want to sacrifice <coughs> movement for size. But, uh, you know, like we talked about there, four, four, four hands on the first level, four eyes on the second level. So you want to, you know, double team the guy into the lap of the, of, the, of the other guy. So a lot of it is not truly a lot of single blocks, but we do a lot of gap schemes too. I mean, not to get into the whole deal, but no, their ability to climb to the second level regardless of the scheme has been something that's been pretty good. What do you see as Errol Thompson's best skill? Errol? Yeah. Uh, Probably his cerebral approach. Yeah, he's like he's like a quarterback on defense. Yeah. I mean, outside of everything else, the guy, the guy, you like coach on field. How, how does someone with that kind of approach separate themselves in a SEC that always has a pretty high talent level of linebacker? How does he? How, how does someone with that approach kind of? Well, I think it's it's, it's not, it, when you you take his understanding of the game and his football IQ and you combine it with you know a 255 pound guy. That can you know plug interior gaps and also run sideline to sideline that has a high motor. I think those are guys who can play in this conference at a high level and also transition to the, to the next one pretty well. Because when you go up there, it's not as much, you know, I'm not going to say it's it's not a as much of a spread game because teams are more 11 personnel in the NFL than they are anything else. But you do see a lot more two back where the traditional Mike linebacker uh, has more of an interior role than maybe in, in a league like ours where you know more people are spread out and you're asking that guy to cover a lot of ground sideline to sideline.